Hello, CL. God hey, bless you. We are so excited, Pastor Cam and myself, so excited uh, being with you right where you are and our CL family all over the world, our friends, those of you that are in the CL home churches. God bless you. Uh, we're so excited about the things that God has put on our heart today. And you know, Pastor Cam, when when I was praying this morning, I was thinking about our nation and praying for our nation. I And the message that we had today, I literally started thinking about how when Jesus told the disciples to get in the boat and go forward, yeah. go to the other side, yeah. and they got in the middle. The Bible says they got in the middle of the lake, and all of a sudden this massive storm came, and the boat was just rocking back and forth. Uh, it looks like it, the, the water was filling up uh, inside the boat, possibility of the boat sinking, possibility of them drowning, mm. uh, all kinds of thoughts going through their minds. But, you know, Pastor Cam, I, I thinking about our nation, I thought about that boat. Yeah. And I thought about how the waves of strife and division and mm. uh, racism and uh, just all kinds of, of waves, immorality, uh, deception, the waves and the winds yeah. of deception that are blowing. And it seems like that our nation is like it being in that boat where we're just kind of going back and forth, rocking, right. and uh, we're taking on water. Yeah. You know, it seems like that, okay, could could this be it for our nation? Are we, are we going to drown? You know, but then Jesus stood up. Mm. And, and so many disciples, and I'm seeing so many Christians today that think that literally we are sinking as a nation. Yeah. And, and, and some people that I, I'm listening to are almost like we're, we're giving up. Yeah. And I'm thinking about where is your prayer? Where is your stamina? Where is your fervency? Where is your passion? Where is your God? I yeah, mean, yeah. how big is your God? Mm. You know, and how Jesus got up and stood up and spoke to the storm. Right. And how we need to be praying and not freaking out, right. not giving into the spirit of fear, yeah. but literally praying and interceding and speaking the yeah. word of God to the storms. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm reminded in the series that we are in right now, Stand Still and Go Forward, that it was the same identical situation with the Israelites. Yeah, uh, Pharaoh coming in looking like they were just going to be totally massacred and destroyed, uh, that uh, their lineage would be taken out. Hmm. Uh, they were afraid. They were crying out. Hmm. Uh, they were looking to Moses as the leaders, as the leader. What is he going to do? A lot of people are looking to the pastors. They're yeah. looking to the fivefold ministry today. Yeah. They're, they're wanting to hear what's coming out of their mouth. And there's a lot of fear, doubt, and unbelief uh, that, that I'm seeing and I'm hearing. And yet Moses uh, stood up and he said, stand still. Exodus 14, chapter, stand still. Yeah. And he said, "See the, do not fear, see the salvation of God. Right. And then he prophesied, which we talked about last week. But yeah. then God speaks up. Speaks up. <laughs> Yeah. God says something to Moses, who is the leader. Yeah. And here's what, he here's what he says. He said, and the Lord said to Moses in Exodus 14, 15. Woo! Ooh, 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 ooh. Just type so, w -O 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 -O. Yeah. <laughs> Exodus 14, 15. <laughs> and he said, the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Mm. And the word cry there means a cry of distress. D discret, distress and being despondent, a mm. cry of giving up. Wow. Okay, so he said, Why do you cry to me? Tell now, who's he speaking to? He's speaking to Moses, Moses. who's the leader. Yeah, we need to hear the voice of God today. Yeah. We need to hear what God is saying to us as leaders and pastors today yeah. to lead our people, our congregations, and to lead people. To go forward. Right. You know, because he said, tell the children of Israel to go forward. And and so what, what God's plan is, is for us to advance. Mm. His plan is for us going forward always, yes. growing, making progress. That's his, his plan for our life. And notice that God didn't say, hey, guys, you know what? There's a whole lot of people out there. Oh, wow. I didn't know a Pharaoh was going to uh, recoup and come back and... <laughs> 
you, you know, uh, yeah. I don't know what we're going to do here. God is always saying to us, advance. Yeah. There is a time to stand still, refocus, but then we've got to advance. Yeah. There is a time to sit still, and in that sitting still, we build our lives. Yeah. We, we get our focus on God. Yeah. We get ourselves into the Word of God. You know, God is the one who allowed Pharaoh to come back. Mm. And God is the, the one truth. who led them through the wilderness to get them into a position and place to focus on me. Yeah. We have the church has been too dependent on the things in the natural. Yeah. We've gotten too comfortable. That's the truth. And all of a sudden all of this comes in, God has allowed it to come in even though we know the enemy brought it in, Pharaoh was the enemy coming, but he has allowed this to come in because the church has gotten so complacent, so apathetic, so lukewarm in our mission to be witnesses. Mm. And to understand what we're supposed to, to accomplish in this earth today, that God is saying, okay, you're in this time right now with this COVID-19, all the other unrest uh, uprisings that are taking place. And he's saying, listen, I want your focus on me again. Yeah. I want you to get back to your first love. Yeah, come on. I, I want you to get back to who I am and what I can do. And I want you not to be dependent and comfortable on mm -hmm. just me and my, uh, on just the promises of God. He said, I want you to establish your relationship back with me again. Come on, that's so good. And that should have, that should have taken place when we were sheltered in. But God is, God is saying to, to, to us, what are we doing with this time right now? Yeah. Where is our focus? What are we doing? So good. You know, are we giving into the uh, sp uh, spirit of fear or are we building our faith? Come on. So God is into re uh, into always into advance. He's always into going forward. God does not believe in retreat. Come on. That's the reason I like people say, well, we're going, we have a ladies retreat or a men's retreat. <laughs> I took that out of our vocabulary. <laughs> we have a men's advance and a ladies advance. <laughs> there is no such thing as retreat. Listen to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 38 and 39. I want to read this to you uh, in the Amplified Bible. Listen to this. But my righteous one, if you're born again, he's talking to you. If Jesus is your Lord, he's talking to you right now. But my righteous one, the one justified by faith, shall live mm -hmm. by faith, Come respecting on. man's relationship to God, trusting him. If he draws back, shrinking in fear, my soul has no delight in him. Wow. No delight in him. Wow. But our way is not that of those who shrink, shrink back. back to destruction. Come on. Shrink back to fear. You shrink back in fear, there's going to be destruction. That's what he's saying right here. But we, glory to God, he's talking about us. We, <laughs> but we are of those who believe. Come on. Glory to God. Relying on God through faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and by this confident faith, faith we preserve the soul. Listen, for us to fulfill our destiny, we must continue, you and I, all of us, we must continue to grow. Yes. We must continue to progress, even when, it's the, when we encounter seem, seemingly un- uh, insurmountable or impossible circumstances, regardless of what's going on around us. There are certain things that we must settle in our heart to move forward in faith and not retreat or give up. Don't give up on what God can do in our nation. Yeah. Don't give in and give up on what is going on and allow that to be your victor and, and, and you begin to act like a victim. Yeah. You've got to begin to say, you know what? My God rules the nations. Come on. He he makes the decision. He's sovereign in this in this place. And when we pray, if you he said, if I find one man to stand in the gap, if we pray, we intercede. God moves, praise God. Come so on. here's what you and I need to understand. He's called us to advance. Okay? So if he's called us to advance and go forward, that means that going forward is going to be productive. Mm -hmm. It's going to be productive, okay? So you need to understand 
in going forward, several things you need to understand, but you need to understand that God has already written our destinies and a plan for us to follow, Pastor Cam. That's right. Uh, I want to read in Psalm 139, 16 through 17. It says, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And, and, and in- let, me, let, me, let me jump in here real quick mm-hmm. because the word uninform, uh, uh, unformed right there, it actually in the Hebrew means embryo. Wow, so good. So you saw me whenever I was just an embryo. <laughs> and in your book, they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, Oh God, how great is the sum of them. So just like you said, one of the things that has to be settled in our lives is the realization that God has already written a destiny and a plan for our lives and that he's thinking good thoughts about us. Um, You know, last Thursday during Good Morning CL, Pastor Josh and I were praying through Psalm 139. And one of the things that really struck me as we were reading through it was this thought that there is nothing humble about pretending like we aren't who God says Mm -hmm. that we are. There's nothing humble about downplaying who we are in Christ and who God has created us to be. You know, there's this whole theology based around this idea that we're supposed to think we're wretched. We're supposed to think that we're sinners. We're supposed to think that we're not very good. We're supposed to think all of these things that at one point in our life were the truth, that we were sinners and that that we were wretched and that we couldn't save ourselves. They kind of, there's this theology based around Romans 7 whenever Paul is reflecting on his previous life whenever he lived under the law and he was saying the things that I do want to do I don't do and the things that I don't want to do I do and and then he ends up saying oh wretched man that I am Mm -hmm. but some people don't get to the end of that scripture whenever he says who will save me thanks be unto God who leads me into triumph who is my victory who is my righteousness he was talking about his life before Before Christ. Christ before he was born again right he was trying in his mind trying to live the law by his own works. And that is the definition of religion. Right. And then he rolls into Romans 8, where he starts talking about all of who he is in Christ, that there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that I'm no longer under the law of sin and death. Now I'm I'm living with the law of spirit and life. I've been given the spirit by which I can call out Abba Father, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. He starts saying all of these incredible things that God has spoken about him and realizing that the moment that you get saved, your destiny is redeemed, not just your past, not just the things from before, but who you are and who you are becoming has been redeemed. And not only has that been redeemed, but the plan and purpose for God over your life has been redeemed. And we need to realize, here's the crazy thing. When David wrote Psalm 139, that was in the old covenant. Mm Mm-hmm. And so if God thought those things about David then, how much more does he think about us yes. who have been regenerate? And, and, and something else too when it says, and in your book they were written for me the days fashioned yeah. for me. Yeah. So God has already written a plan for a our lives. A plan for our lives is called destiny. Yeah. He has a destiny. He yeah. has a purpose. Yeah. And so th- therefore that plan mm-hmm. is is not something that is bad. No, it's that plan is that whatever vocation that I'm in, wherever I find myself, if if you're a school teacher, if you're a truck driver, Come if on. you're military, yeah. uh, if you're a doctor, if you're a, a, a lawyer, if you're born again, whatever your vocation is, the plan is for you to bring glory and honor to God, to God, to and do good, to do good in everything, yeah. and the plan is a good plan. Yeah. In in, in other words, but. We have an enemy mm-hmm. who is going to do everything we can, he can, to deceive us yeah. and to get us off the path, 
get us off the plan, mm-hmm. uh, get us back in sin so that we won't bring glory and honor to God. That's something that's really interesting about Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Um, of course, I'll read it first and then I'll give some explanation. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, the really interesting thing is, you know, we're talking about how God planned our days. God intentionally thought out our days. And right here in Jeremiah, God speaks to the people of Israel. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. The most interesting thing about that is they were in captivity, right? Whenever God spoke this over them. This was not a moment of like happy-go-lucky, we're excited and like we're in this really positive moment. We've been living in prosperity and peace and now God comes to us and says, I have thought, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace to give you a hope and a future and all of that. No, the, these guys were in a really, really rough spot in and, their and, life. And let me, and let me, let me share this. And, and if you read, if you read in Jeremiah, mm-hmm. the reason they were in that rough spot is because they got over into idolatry. Yeah. And idolatry is anything that you put above God. Right. That's right. in your heart. Yeah. They got into idolatry. They got into sin. Yeah. It, when when the prophets were coming and saying, don't do that, that's like a pastor standing up and, and preaching and, and saying, hey, don't go out this week and get into sin, yeah. okay? Because it's going to cost you if you do. The consequences yeah, yeah, yeah. are going to be greater than what you think. Mm-hmm. You know, the wages of sin, sin does pay. Wages of sin is death. That means dis- destruction. So, so they got themselves into that position. Yeah. God did not want them to stay there. No. He wanted them to repent. Yeah. They didn't repent. Yeah. Actually, when Jeremiah showed up and tried to get them to repent, they basically got, they threw him out. I mean, yeah. they didn't want to hear. They got mad at him. Uh, I mean, one of the kings put him in prison. Yeah. You know, and, and so a lot of times uh, people will get offended when you start bringing correction. Yeah. Or it, and it's not us. It's yeah. us reading the Word of God that brings conviction by the Holy yeah. Spirit. And what does God do? God said, wait a minute. You're over here in the devil's territory. Yeah. You, you, you have put yourself in a place now that, uh, that you're in evil, but my thoughts to you, if there's repentance, my thoughts to you is for you to yeah. have peace, future, and a hope that have yeah. already written out for you. Yeah. And I want you to move in that. When I think the beautiful part about that is even under the law, you know, because the Israelites were under right. the law at this point, grace was manifesting. Yes. And God was saying, God was saying to them, These are my thoughts towards you, even in the condition and the state that you're in. Right. And that's one thing that some people don't realize is that God's thoughts towards us don't change. Right. But our response to his thoughts. Our response, our response to his plan and his destiny, that that's on us. And sometimes we equate the feeling like that we're not walking in God's plans and purposes as God's rejection. But really what it is, is that God continually has the right thoughts about us. God continually, he's, ne- he's never stopped thinking well of us. But whether or not we walk in the reality of that, that's up to us. I, I, there's a, I can't remember if it's in Philippians. I believe it's in Philippians where, where Paul says, walk worthy of the call. Mm-hmm. Walk worthy of the call. And that's what God, God calls us righteous, holy, saved, redeemed. He calls us blessed. He calls us all these other things. Well, it's up to us. It's our decision whether or not we're going to walk in that right or if we're going to walk towards the destiny and the purpose and the future that God is laying out for us right. all throughout his word. right? And so it's our decision. We're the ones that have to make up our minds of, are we going to walk in right. the destiny and the calling? Are we going to go yeah. forward? It's our church. Right. God, God says, 
I'm going to go forward. God says, I've already made a way for you, but then it's our decision to take that step well, that, towards that goes, his will. That, that goes back to Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, right. in verse 19, where he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day. Yeah, He said, I'm putting this on record. I set before you life and death, Choose life. blessing and yeah. cursing, and then he then he gives us the the answer to the test. Choose life. He says, choose life. Yeah. So every single day, and Jesus said this. He said, my words are spirit and life. Yeah. Which means that I choose to obey God's word. Yeah. So so when we're talking about the the, the will of God and His destiny and His destiny, then there are keys. Yeah. That God has given to us, and this is so important for us mm. to continue to move forward. It's, it's so important for us to find out. Yeah. So the keys to finding His will and to know the days that were written in His book before we were born, how do we find those things? Because number one, I have His Word, which is the written will of God. Yeah. I have that. Yep. But they are days that are written for me that are not in his written will inside the Bible. Right. Like, what vocation do I take? Mm -hmm. Who I'm going to marry? Mm -hmm. You know, the things that I do on a regular basis, which we just think, okay, it's just kind of hit and miss, whatever will be, will be. No, if if my days have already been written, that means that he just didn't write my morning. Mm Mm-hmm. He wrote my morning. He wrote my noon. He wrote my night in the evening. He wrote everything there. Yeah. And so it's up to me to be able to, to find. So his written will mm-hmm. is something that is so important for me. It, it's, it, it's vital for me mm-hmm. uh, to read that on a yeah. daily basis. Yeah. Because listen, why do I need to really read it on a daily basis? Listen to this. 2 Timothy the third chapter, verse 14 and 17. But you must, and this is Paul talking to Timothy, and by the way, this is when the 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 Roman oppression and hot. Christians being put to death are yeah. just it, it is incredible what we're seeing on the atmosphere and the environment that Timothy is living in, but here's what Paul's saying. Paul's saying, listen, you must read the the Word of God on a regular basis. Here's what he says. You must continue in the things which you have learned. In other words, Timothy is constantly learning. He's studying. He's learning and being and being assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. We not only, and it says that from childhood... You have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ. And I just want to take a moment. It says right here that you have learned them that from childhood. Well, who taught him? He was raised in a single mother family. He also had a grandmother. But they took the time to teach. Yeah, Parents, I'm going to say this to you. You're either allowing the culture to teach your children right now, or you are teaching them the Word of God. Yeah. That's another thing that the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourself with the brethren. Why? Because God is the one who raised up and, and, and put together local churches for the discipleship, for the maturing, for the growing, so that we can progress. Uh, so the hearing the voice of God, understanding how to, you know, to walk with God. I, I mean, when we look at this uh, from, from childhood, you have known. You have known the Holy Scriptures. How much Scripture do your children know? Can mm-hmm. they even quote Scripture? Do they know anything about Scripture? Or do they just know Sunday is just going to church? Yeah. And, and you don't teach your children church. You t- tell them about church, why we go to church. You teach them Jesus. Come you on. teach them the Word of God. I yeah. mean, like right now, you have Netflix who put out a, a, a movie called Cuties. And it is 11-year-old girls acting in a way that is sexually provocative. It's almost like stirs up pedophiles. The lust and what these little girls are doing. My question is, what parent 
What parent would allow their kids to be on that movie unless they're full of greed? And unless all they care about is how much money can I get from this if I see my little girl out there, 11-year-old girls out there with, with, with body gyrations and everything that looks like they're in a bedroom with somebody. That's crazy. That's the reason I canceled my subscription, yeah, me too. you know, because we need to start stepping up and doing something, especially when all of this is being put out and we're just saying, well, it's just the way the culture is. Well, you know what the Bible tells us? that in this culture, in a crooked and perverse generation, we are to be the light. We're to yeah. hold forth the Word of God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've, I mean, you've, got, yeah. You, you've yeah. got a young son that is yeah. coming up right well, now. And, we, and that's, that's one thing that's really interesting, you know, because Benji's very young, and his understanding is, and his attention span are very short, but it's still... Like I, last night, Michaela and I were just laying in bed with him and he's two years old. And I just, I just kept on having him say little things. I said, Benji say, I, I am, am loved, loved. I, I love, love Jesus, Jesus. And it's just little, I find, I look for, the smallest opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, and one, one of the things that I think is really important is, listen, children are so much smarter than you think oh. they are. And they're paying closer attention than what you think that they're paying. Two-year-olds can work yeah. iPhones. And yeah, things. they can work iPhones yeah. and iPads and, and all different things. And, and here, here's something um, that uh, a very wise person told me a couple of days after Benji was born, he said, you need to make a core decision if you're going to raise your child or if other people are going to raise your child mm -hmm. and other things are going to raise your children. Because, I mean, I, I can tell you, whenever I was in school, I mean, I think I was, let's see, I think I was probably, I, th I, was, I was probably five or six years old whenever I first started learning about sex from kids on a playground, mm -hmm. just talking about private parts and different things like that. And that's just what, that, that, that was, I mean, however many years ago, I guess 20 years ago that, or a little over 20, 25 years ago that that was happening. Mm -hmm. and, and now things have progressed. Access to information is, I mean, this right here, it can either be a tool or it can be a weapon mm -hmm. in the lives of our children. And so we have to make a decision. That's not to say that you, you know, just completely take television out of their lives or different things like that. It just means that we need to be vigilant and watchful. I, lo I love what it says in 1 Peter, to be sober, to be vigilant, because your enemy walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So who easier to devour than a young child yeah. that's just sitting there, flipping through different things, scrolling through different things, and there's no watchfulness or vigilance, right. or there's no teaching on the other side, because that's, that's one thing that's really important whenever we consider this too. Right. You, we have to be willing to go through hard questions with our children. If you get asked a question by your child that shakes the way that you think about something, it's time for you to dig in and really search out the scripture because man, I'm telling you, kids are so smart. If, if, if you don't teach them, yeah. somebody else will. Yeah. If you don't answer their question, somebody else will. Well, so how easy is it to go on Google and type in, does God exist? And then you're thinking, you, you think about Google. Google is a numeric thing. And so there is almost an infinite amount of answers that your child is going to get and they're going to have to be the ones to sort through that on their own. Or because if, if, you, if, if your child comes to you and says, hey, mommy and daddy, does God really exist? And you say, well, of course. Well, how? And you can walk them through. But if you get to a point in that conversation where you're upset and angry and you get frustrated that you don't know the answer... Let, let me teach you the best, best sentence that you could know as a parent. I don't know. Let's find out together. 
Yeah. That's beautiful yeah. to be able to, if a, if a child comes to you with a question that you don't understand, a theological or just a life question in general, to be able to say, I don't know, let's find out together. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. Don't get uptight because you don't know how to respond to your child. Grab some books, look up some videos, call the church, talk to us, ask us for resources because we yeah. would love to help you guys with stuff like Cause that. Because if, if, if you don't, somebody else will. Yeah. You can either educate your children on truth or somebody's going to educate them on lies and deception. That's right. So let's let's go on this. It said, from, from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, uh, which are able to make you wise, to make you wise. The Scripture makes you wise. The Scripture gives you wisdom. Not only can I ask God for wisdom in my e- everyday routine life, the things that, that, that come up where I work, uh, the things that come up uh, in just dealing with people, I can say, Father, I need wisdom right now. And, of course, this, the Holy Spirit will give you that wisdom. God said, yes. if you lack wisdom, just ask. That means yep. in everything. But yep. yet, the Scripture gives me wisdom yeah. so that when something comes up that is a lie or is, uh, is, is false or is deception, if I'm wise in the Scripture... Uh, that means that I'm going to know the Word of God and what's going what's to come out of my mouth like Jesus did in the wilderness when He was being tempted. It is written, it is written, it is written. So he says this, all Scripture is given by inspiration mm-hmm. of God. Even though He moved upon people to write the Scripture, the Holy Scripture, but it was by God. The Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable. Advantageous is what that word means. For doctrine, that means instruction and learning. For reproof, conviction. If I'm reading the Bible on a daily basis and there is something that is off course with my life, if I'm living in, in, a, in a manner or way uh, that is not pleasing to God, guess what the Holy Spirit? Thank God the Holy Spirit is the, is the helper. He's also the one who leads me into all truth. So mm. that means that if I'm out of truth, He's going now to convict me. Now, you can do one of two things. You can, you can give way to that conviction and repent and get back into the place where you need to be, or you can harden your heart. Yeah. You can become offended, and you can say, no, I'm going to do this. I, I'm going to continue on it. And guess what? It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you big time. Okay. Yeah. So it says for reproof, conviction, for correction. And the word correction there means a straightening up again, an improvement of character. That's good. The one thing that I'm seeing as a pastor today, Pastor Cam, is I'm seeing more and more people get offended so quick when you try to bring correction. It's the truth. Man, they get upset, they get offended, they get defensive, and instead of sitting there going, you know what, that is right. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I need to be corrected. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many times that I have read the Word of God, reading my daily Bible reading, and something happened maybe that week or the previous day, yeah. and I read that, I come under conviction, and the, and the Word of God corrects me. You should yeah. not have said this. You should yeah. not have acted that way. Yeah. You know, and I repent, Lord, you are. And there, there, sometimes there's phone calls that I've made and asked people to forgive me the way I spoke, the way yeah. I did things. You've because even the, asked uh, uh, us, our kids, your kids for forgiveness before. Yes, I have. Yeah. I did because the Holy Spirit would convict me. I ring the Word of God. I have gone to y'all as my children before and say, please forgive Dad the way he acted and said, I should not have done yeah. that. That is not right. Yeah. And we need to do that with our children at times when we have lost it, we have messed up, we need to go back to them. Yeah. Well, it creates a healthy relationship with growth that most people don't have. Right. Most people don't have a healthy relationship with growth because they view correction as rejection. And if someone says, hey, if the Bible, if the Bible says, you can do better here, or this is what you've been created for. If we look at that as saying, well, I'm being rejected because I'm not already that way, instead of viewing the Bible as an invitation into a higher way of living and to a greater way uh, of existing in this life, right. the way that God intended it to be, then, then it, we're losing so much of the transformative power right. of the gospel. 
But that's the great thing about the gospel is, it, is that it says you are accepted for who you are, but you're also being called up higher. Yes. And so that's the yes. function of the Holy Spirit yes. through the word of God for us to be able to read the word, see where we're not acting like a son or daughter of God right. and go up higher. You know, and sometimes, sometimes people have such a mindset uh, that they go to church, but they have not really educated themselves in the word of God. Yeah. But they go to church. They've been sermonized. They go to church, but they don't have a steady daily diet Mm-hmm. of reading the Word of God, which, yeah. th- which the Bible uh, in Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, verse 3 says, God said, man shall live by not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah. So sometimes, another thing is, sometimes uh, we, will, we will associate ourselves with and have friendships and things with people that the Bible says don't hang out with them. Yeah. Don't be associated with them. Yeah. So many times Christians can have what I call unholy alliances. Mm. Like Jehoshaphat had with Ahab and almost cost him his life. Yeah. But when you start correcting them and saying, the, you know, the Bible says bad company corrupts good character. Yeah. And you start trying to correct them to hang out with them. They they want to be affirmed so bad and accepted so bad. And to to run with certain people yeah. or certain crowds or organizations that no matter what the Bible says, mm-hmm. they are going to be there's going to be such a stronghold in their mind, and they're going to reject the word. Yeah, and they're going to continue that relationship. They're going to continue walking in that deception. Yeah, and and you down the down the line is going to cost them dearly. Yeah, let's true. let's go into this real quick. It says. For is for instruction. That means education and chastisement. <laughs> you know, this is the way God chastises us in the New Testament. Yeah. Th- this is it. First, He chastises us in the Spirit. Yeah. If we're not going to listen to Him, He's going to let us run the way of the flesh, which is going to cost us. Yeah. He doesn't want that. He did it with Israel. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want us paying a price <laughs> for our sin. He wants us to repent yeah. and get back into the place where we need to be. Mm-hmm. And so when I read the Word, the Word has chastised me so many times yeah. in my life because yeah. I'm still growing. I'm, I'm still moving forward in that. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, people say, well, God put this sickness on me to chastise me or to teach me. No, God doesn't use sickness he doesn't need sickness. He, he doesn't. He he uses his word yeah. to 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 chastise us. He yeah. uses his word yeah. to teach us and lead us, guide us, and direct us. It's, it's the, the enemy that yep. attacks us with sickness and disease. Yep. If you ever think that God is putting that on you, you're history, <laughs> because you're not going to fight. Right. You know. You you might There's as well no give up. In fighting. No, absolutely. So <laughs> it says for instruction, education, chastisement in righteousness. That means in right standing with God, integrity, purity of life, correctness of thinking and, and, uh, and acting. Actually, it says in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse 13 and 14, speaking of, uh, of, of righteousness, the word of God, it just says right here, uh, instruction in righteousness. It says in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse 13 and 14, for everyone who partakes only of milk, that is the elementary things of the Word of God, like just John three sixteen, which is very important. Getting saved, yeah. but you got to move forward. You got to educate. So it yeah. says, if you only partake of milk, then is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Yeah. But solid food—that means the balance of the Word of God. Solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, who by reason of use. <laughs> Have, have their senses exercised to be able to discern good and evil. One of the reasons that the Lord was showing me as a pastor, one of the reasons that people are not able to discern, which we need discernment today, between good and evil today is because they're not going past the milk. Yeah, yeah. They're still nursing on the milk. Yeah. And they must go to the solid food. Yeah. That means really reading the Word of God, getting yeah. into the depth 
of the teaching. Why is this so important? Psalms 119, 105. Your word, again, to our direction, to our path, to our destiny. Your word is a lamp into my feet and a light to my path. And, and, uh, and, and the thing is, a path has already been placed there for us. Why? Because God has written every single day in his book, Psalms 139. Yeah. This is this is this is so incredible because of what this this means. The word path there means a path that has already been placed and trodden down. Yeah. The way that that what that makes me think of is um, not many people know that I'm actually I I'm a I can I'm a wilderness guide. And so I'm very well versed in navigational skills and using topography maps and things like that. And the intention of a map that has a trail is to make sure you stay on the intended path. So that's what I use. That's what I look at the Bible as in my life. There's different twists and turns that God wants to take me on. There was a a turn in my life when God told me that Michaela was my wife. There was a turn in my life when God told me to go to the mission field. There was a turn in my life whenever God told me um, to come back to covenant love. Those were all turns, but what kept me on the intended path the whole way was the word of God. It's kind of, it was like my, my boundaries and prayer. No, yeah. You, and you prayer. Develop prayer. So I prayed and I would hear the voice of God, but then I can compare and know that I'm really hearing the, the voice of God by what he says in his word as right. well, because that's one thing that some people don't understand. God's never going to tell you to do anything outside of his word. Right. God, I, I, I do. That's you our know, compass. Right. It's our compass. It's not, it's not to say that God's restrained by his word, but he is confirmed by it. You know, that's the reason why God gave us his word so that whenever we hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us, we can pick up our Bible and we can see he's not, he's not going to tell you to hate someone. He's not going to tell you um, to speak down to someone. He's not going to tell you to hold unforgiveness in your heart. Condemn and, someone. Yeah, he's not going to tell you to wait for someone to ask you for forgiveness before you forgive them. Different. There's, there's certain things, or even if God's calling you into a vocation, he's not going to call you into vocation that would hurt people. He's not going to ask you to, if God's called you to be a car salesman, God's not going to tell you to lie to people so that you can sell more cars. Or if you're a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, God's not going to tell you to commit malpractice as a right. doctor. And if that's what he's called you to, you can follow those major shifts and turns in your lives and you can be sure right. that it's God speaking to you when you compare it to the word of God and yeah. say, you know what, this lines up with godly principles. This lines up with the things that this keeps me on the path. Right. And, and it's so important to your word. Your word is a lamp to my feet, my path, yeah. a light to my path. Again, a path that's already been placed before you. Exactly. Before you ever went, mm -hmm. and it's already been trodden down. The Bible says that God knows the end from the beginning. Mm. So what does God do? God takes the beginning of your life. He walks it out for you. Yeah. He establishes the path that he wants for you. Yeah. And every single time that you get to an impasse or an obstacle or a circumstance or whatever, he's got a way through it. He's already mm -hmm. put a path there. How do you do that? That's what we're going to talk about next time. <laughs> How do we find that in prayer? Yeah. How do we pray concerning the will of God? Not only the the will according to the word, but how do we pray according to the will of that which has been written that is not in the word yeah. concerning our, our lives? L listen to this. We're talking about the children of Israel. They, they come up to the Red uh, Sea. They come up to the Red Sea. And when they when when they get into the Red Sea, because this this is absolutely <laughs> an, inc an incredible scripture here. But when they get up uh, to to the Red Sea, uh Psalm 77. Psalm 77. Mm -hmm. Let me let me get over that. Listen, listen to this. This is this is crazy. <laughs> Psalm 77. So they get up to the Red Sea. The Bible says God has led them through the wilderness. He led them on the highway and the path that He already had for them. Mm -hmm. 
okay? So he leads, leads them up to the Red Sea, and so what are they going to do? I mean, they're going to drown? Is, is it an impasse? Is, is this an impossibility? I mean, how are they going to get through the Red Sea? And God says, go forward. Listen to this, Psalm 77, 19. Your way was in the sea. <laughs> Your path in the great waters and your footsteps were not known. At that time. At that time, because he had already walked through the Red Sea. Yeah. He, When he created the Red Sea, he put that path there because he knew they were going to be there one day. That's so good. See, God has got a path for you, ladies and gentlemen, right now. He's got a way for you where you, it, it may be unknown to you right now. You don't see it, but when you start praying and you start praising Jesus, and you start getting into the Word, guess what? God's going to show it to you. The gonna way is to going you. to open. And the way did not open just instantly. Man, you should read that all night long. It says that the Spirit of God was moving. God was drying that ground. You know what? God is getting ready to divide what is your impasse. God's getting ready to deal with that. He's yeah. already laid a path there. The path could be the word of God that we're standing on in the midst of the trouble, but God has got a way for you to get through it. That's where your prayer comes. That's where you are believing God. But let me just say, we're going to address a lot of this uh, next week. Live. God, live. You know, September 27th, we're coming back live. Glory to God. 10 a.m. Uh, amen. And we're, we're, we're so excited. But we'll be live streaming right here also. Here's what you need to understand. The Bible says, your way was in the sea. God has already made the way. Guess what? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on. You may not have salvation right now. You may not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. You may not be born again, but the Bible says God has made a way for your salvation. God has made a way for your deliverance. God has made a way for you to move forward. When it looks like that everything in your life is falling apart, nothing is making sense, He's made a way for you to be satisfied and That's right. filled in your emptiness. That's right. In your loneliness, He's made a way who is the way? The way is not something physical in the world. It is Jesus. The yeah, way a is a person, the son of the living God. Come on. And by the way, if you've gotten off the path, it's time to repent and get back on the path because God still has a destiny for you. No matter what has happened, no matter what you have done, mm -hmm. if you repent of your sins, God will forgive you. If you've never received Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, that's your path. Wow. That is your way. God has written your life. You know, you say, well, my life's falling apart. Well, get back on the path. Yes. Get back into Jesus. Yes. Get back into the Word. Come on. Get back into prayer. We'll teach you how to pray. We'll teach you. That's what local church is about. We'll teach you these things and how to grow. That's what our discipleship classes are about. CL Talks is about on Wednesday nights and, and our discipleship classes. So we can do that. But the first step that you have to make is you have to acknowledge the way. Yes. Acknowledge Jesus. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. Come on, Jesus. Repent of your sin mm -hmm. and get back on the path. I want you to pray this with us right now. Say, Father God. Father God. I believe. I believe. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Is the son of the living God. Is the son of the living God. I believe he died for me. I believe he died for he me. He took my sin. He took my sin. Upon himself. Upon himself. So that I could be forgiven. So that I could be forgiven. Of all my sin. Of all my sin. Today. Today. I repent. I repent. Of all my sin. Of all my sin. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I denounce. I denounce. Every part of darkness. Every part of darkness. That's been in my life. That has been in my I life. I denounce it. I denounce it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And today. And today. I confess. I confess. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. As Lord. As Lord. Of my life. Of my life. Now, my friend, <laughs> if you prayed that. Amen. You believe that in your heart. You are now saved. You are delivered. You are on the Thank right you, path. Jesus. And now you can talk to Jesus. You can talk to your heavenly father every single day. But get into the word of God. Yeah. If you don't have a Bible, go get one. 
Get into the Word of God and start reading in the New Testament, especially over in the book of Ephesians. That's written to the new believer. Now you're a new believer. Get into the epistles. Get in Ephesians and start reading. You will see Holy Spirit will open your eyes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we're so excited. We're, again, excited. Next Sunday, we're going to be back live, but we'll be right Ooh. here, and we're going to be diving into more of this because we're going to teach you how to walk that path. That's right. We're going to teach you how to find the will of God in every single situation. Yeah. I want to thank each and every one of you for your giving. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, give, Jesus said this, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, men will give into your bosom. Ladies and gentlemen, we are making a difference right now all over the world. Yeah. All over the world. This, this gospel is going out all over the world. Come on. So listen, don't get uh, lazy or don't get slack on your giving, your tithe, your offerings. This is a day and a time that we're living in. We want to continue to give. Amen. Be faithful in our giving. Amen. God will be faithful in blessing you and taking care of you in everything that you do. Right. I mean, in our life, we are upping our giving right now because yep. we need to do more to Jesus. get this gospel out. We're social media, everything that we can. So be faithful with your giving and let's continue to advance the kingdom of God. Pastor Cam, we're going forward in <laughs> Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you.